Hello and welcome to Miniature Realms. My name's Stuart and welcome to a painting tutorial. So today's subject is going to be General Stonewall Jackson from Warlord Games Epic Battles American Civil War range. Those of you who are subscribers of the channel will probably be well aware that at least half of my channel is full of videos relating to this range. Um, there's a full um, project vlog in progress as I work my way through this large, large game and large project. There are plenty of unboxings and some thoughts and comments on the releases as they came out. Um, and then there are also some painting tutorials already in existence as well. And I'll be drawing on some examples of a couple of those later in the video. But what I wanted to do today really was was sort of go through how I complete one of my command stands and you can see a couple here ahead of you so this is Robert E Lee and this is George Mead um, and I'd like to use these Warlord Games 50mm round lipped bases um, just to make them little scenic displays which is something that's a little bit cool on the battle table. Placing these to one side um, you can see what I've got lined up to work on today. Now I'm not going to paint all three miniatures as part of the video. There will be a lot of repetition of technique across the three um, and I don't want to keep make the video any longer than it really needs to be. So I'm going to focus on Jackson himself which seems to be the obvious thing to do but I will give a quick nod to the preparation beforehand. So I've partly prepped my base. Um, I've added a few broken bits of MDF from the frames of sprues and, and there's a bit of broken 3D printed building as well just to add a little bit of rubble as a little bit of sort of a feature in the corner of the base itself and on my command bases I like to put three models so the general a flag bearer and then another officer so the officer is actually one of the standard plastic ones from the standard sprue to do with this game um, but because I've got 15 of the same sculpt I've played around with a few and this is a minor conversion so I've repositioned the arm I've turned his head slightly as if he's leaning forward and I've sculpted a beard on him as well and the idea is is that hopefully Hopefully he will look like that he's sort of leaning over to talk to someone as, uh, as he's sort of riding by or riding alongside. So I'll put those two to the side as well and that brings you on to the main focus of the video today which will be painting Jackson himself. So like the previous models I've prepared him ready for painting and I've used a zenithal priming method as I'm going to be using primarily citadel contrast paints at least for the base layers I will use standard paints to highlight afterwards. Now I'm going to pop a link in the show now and that is to my initial painting video which shows how I painted the confederate infantry and at the beginning of that video I do show how I produce these pre-highlighted shades but essentially what I'm doing is priming in black first. I use the airbrush on these smaller mon miniatures because I don't want to obscure detail by getting too much paint on with a rattle can but if you're careful with a rattle can it's absolutely fine. I then use the airbrush to spray on some Vallejo grey primer. I thinned it because it's not priming at that stage because the black's already on so I thinned it to help it go through but I'm leaving some of the black underneath so you're creating natural shadow. And then finally I'm dry brushing the miniature with some white to really pick out the top details all over. Um, and the reason for all of that will become quite apparent as I start to apply layers of paint in a, in, in a few moments time but essentially you've got a grey scale miniature there that's already showing the where the light's hitting showing its top highlights and it's, and, it's, and it's kind of darkish shadows and things and that really really helps especially when you're painting with contrast because I'm going to be using them slightly thinned essentially as glazes and using all of that pre shadow and pre highlight to produce the effect of of shadows and highlights. So here we are, so I'm going to build up with Citadel contrast paints over the whole model just to give a base layer. Now the, the pre-shade and highlight will, will help look, make that look more than just flat colour, so it will provide some shadow, some natural highlight as well. Then after that I will go in and highlight certain key areas with regular paints, which will make it pop a little bit more and tidy it up. But this is very much a tabletop model. I think um, doing much more at this scale is just isn't needed for a gaming piece and this is going to be a gaming piece and uh, I think it'll look nice when it's on its um, little command base with all the little extras on there it will look something that look like something will draw the eye but when you look closely it's not something that's going to win any painting competitions so we're going to start with the horse 
Um, I'm going to go with Gore Grunterfer. So I'm just going to put a couple of pictures up now that I found on the internet of uh, Stonewall Jackson. And um, looking at the horse, at least in the pictures I've seen, it seems to be a, a lighter brown horse. I'm not an expert on horses at all, so I don't know what the particular type it was. But that's what I'm going to go with with this. And the trick with contrast paint is to not go too thin um, or you'll get streaks. If you're going to go thin, you really want to water it down. This is straight out of the pot for the effect I want here. It won't be like that for all of the times I use contrast in this tutorial. The other thing is, is not to go too thick either. You just want to get a nice even coat. And with Gaul Grunterfer over this white pre-shade, straight out of the pot is perfect for that. I just need to work quickly because it does dry quickly. And there we are. So that's all of the Seigal brown on. Now I have made the odd tiny little error where I've gone over um, some of the um, the reins or something like that. And it is not super, not super important at this stage, but because of the way I'm painting with contrast and I want to maximize the effect I get from painting over the pre-highlighted miniature, I will just touch those up a little bit later um, before I, I paint in all the scraps and things. Next thing I'm going to do is paint the mane and the tail of the horse and I'm going to use Contrast Wildwood. So I'm just going to use some, some Grace here base it's any grey will do really that's fairly light and close to the the colour that you achieve after the the pre-highlight um, even a little bit of white will do and I'm just going to go around and make sure that there's any little parts where I've just gone over I'm just going to tidy up and I'll do this periodically when I'm using this contrast method it doesn't matter so much on on some models um, but I'm going to go and paint the the reins and all the, the horse tack in in a moment, and I, I really want to make sure that uh, that it stands out. Because the more you do at this stage, the less work you have to do with the the highlighting stage. So, next stage: contrast black templar. And what I want to do is going to pick out all of the reins, the horse's hooves, his saddle. Going to pick out his boots while I'm here as well. Um, and maybe a couple of other little bits, but I think that's that's most of it. Okay, so that's all touched up and all the black painted in. Now the next thing I'm going to do, and I don't know what this is called, horsey people might be able to fill me in on it, is the little bit that goes under the main leather saddle and, and I'm going to paint that blue. I've seen a few different colours on images and things, so obviously they are just paintings. I may be able to find a historical description of what his horse was um, kit, kitted up with. Um, but but who knows, I'm happy with blue, I think it'll look quite good. I'm also at the same time going to give him some blue trousers. Um, now again, a mixture of different images and things and the Confederate uniform was a little bit less uniform, so to speak, than than than, uh, than the, the Union uniform. Um, sometimes he shows in blue, sometimes it's in grey. Um, I want to add blue just purely so I can add a little bit more colour to the miniature, it's as simple as that. Well, the next stage I want to tone down a little bit of the dry brushing in certain areas on the jacket. Now I'm using the grey that was there from the pre-highlight as 
the base for the model. And I'm just gonna use contrast topography white. And, and that's a really good way. It's essentially, it's a gray glaze, um, which goes into the recesses if you've painted a miniature white already, shading your white for you. So if you apply it over white, it just dulls it slightly. So I'm just going to very, very gently put some over certain areas of the coat. I will go back in and do some edge highlighting on his coat at the end. So now I'm gonna add a few more details. I'm gonna add Darko flesh to his face and I'm gonna highlight this later with regular paints, um, but it will give it time to dry. I'm ready for that later on. Now he doesn't have any other skin showing, so I'm going to use Agarash Dunes on his gloves, which are quite often pictured a kind of a yellowish tannish color. So the next part now, just on the inside of his coat, it's lined red and it's very little to see, but I'm gonna add a little bit of Blood Angels red to the inside of his outer coat on his right hand side. Now if this doesn't look right, I will just paint over it again. Sometimes when you've got such a small area showing, it can just look a little bit odd. But it's lovely to have a chance to get some color in there. And then now some contrast Nasdrag yellow. Just want to add a little bit of yellow around the um, collar. And I'll check if there's any other filigree or anything like that I need to pick out on the miniature. So that's the yellow added. Just a few little bits around the front of the jacket. I've actually added a very faint line around the edge of the horse's sort of under saddle there. Um, and a little line on the trousers as well. So a couple more stages now before we can start the highlights. Um, next one is to paint in his hair. I'm gonna be using Contrast Seigel Brown. Now this I've added a little bit of water to because it's very, very strong in pigment. So that's his hair and beard in now. I'm just going to add in a few bits of metallic um, and that'll be the end of the base layers and we'll go on to highlighting. Scale color, black metal, um, and that'll be a perfect base for the stirrups and a few little bits around the harness. And there we are, time to start the highlighting. Um, I'm going to start with the brown leather from Scale Colour here for Scale 75 um, to start highlighting the horse. Now I'm trying to just tidy up what's already here. You can already see where the effect over the pre-highlight of the contrast has left some natural shadow and some highlights. So I want to use what's there as best as possible and just try and reinforce what's already there. So that's the brown leather. I'm now going to use a little flat earth from Model Colour. I'm just going to mix that in 50-50 with the brown leather and just try and slowly build up the highlights on the horse a little bit more. Um, again, probably not needed to do too much here because it's a tabletop model, but because he is a general, I just want to just do a little bit more than I would normally. to that same color again the flat earth but this time rather than mix 50 50 just to go on to add a final little touch okay now to the horse's uh, mane and tail and i'm going to highlight that with walnut from scale 75 scale color
The next stage is to highlight all of the black leather areas. And for that, I'm using the graphene gray from Scale 75 as well. So I've highlighted all of the, the black leather. What I'm gonna do now, now that the, uh, the horse's um, coat is fully dry, I'm just gonna do a very thin layer of Saigor Brown washed right down to a very thin glaze. And all that will do, will just glaze back in the highlights that I've put on there. Just tie it all together nicely. So if we continue with the highlights, I'm going to use this is another scale colour, another scale 75 paint. Um, and this is uh, a light blue. I'm going to struggle to pronounce that, but it's some kind of turquoise. It would be in Spanish, looking at that there. Um, not really turquoise, it's very much a very light blue. But what I'm going to do is put the lightest little highlights on the top of his thighs. Maybe with a little mark just on this. Blanket that's under the saddle of the horse again. Okay, after that, we're going to use model color flat yellow just to add a couple of brighter highlights to some of the yellow trim. And we continue, and this is Dark Sand from Model Colour. Just some slight highlights on the sort of tan gloves. So the next thing I want to do is just add a few little shadows on the jacket. I'm going to do a bit of a mix between two contrast colours here. So the Pterodon Turquoise and a Basilican Grey. Um, so one part each of those and one part water. I'm just going to paint in very lightly in some of the crevices just to add a little bit more depth. So I've added a little bit of shadow and now I'm going to tidy it up and add a few more highlights back in. So back with the grey here which we've seen already, and a little bit of Nakar from Scale Colour. That's the jacket done. Highlights now for his hair. It's quite tricky because he has quite dark hair, I believe, sort of dark brownish hair. Um, I'll model this small, it's very, very hard to um, highlight it in a way that it's not going to end up looking too light, but I'm going to have a go. Um, so I'm going to be using chocolate brown for model colour. I'm going to have a go at just, I think, a couple of minor highlights on. So that's the hair done. I've been as subtle as I can and it looks absolutely fine for this for this size. I'm now going to try and highlight his face. At the moment, remember that is just dark oath flesh contrast paint over the pre-shade and there's already a nice bit of natural highlight to it as it is. But I'm just going to reinforce that slightly with natural flesh and fairy flesh from Vallejo's Noctura range. So I'll start a little bit with the natural flesh. Really thin down, really watered. I'm using a size naught brush here. So I don't want to ruin what's already there, but I do want to make the face just pop that little bit more. And also using a bit of the fairy flesh, just try and pick out 
extremities ever so slightly. So a few final stages now, the flesh is done, not much more to do, nearly ready to go on to the base with the others. I'm going to use some contrast black templar first just to pick out the eyes of the horse. I'm going to use some gay mare silver to do out a couple of very small highlights to the metal areas and then some necro gold from scale colour to pick out the buttons. So there we have all three models glued on to the base. Uh, now the next stage is going to be to add some texture and smooth over the, the other areas. Now I've already painted the, the base um, in petroleum grey, just a very thin layer and that's just in case if there's any gaps with the earth texture, which I'm going to add next from Vallejo, um, it won't show through just bare base underneath. But the plan will be to put a fairly thin layer smooth over from the, the edge of the, uh, the lipped bases from the, the men themselves. So using an old brush I'm almost going to stipple it on, I'm not going to paint it on too too thick apart from just levelling off around the edge of those bases there. Right the Vallejo dark earth texture is now fully dry um, so I've just done a light stippling as I mentioned before. Next stage a good old Agrax earth shade. Okay, so after waiting for the Agrax to dry, the next stage I'm gonna do is actually add some pigments. So if you've seen previous videos, um, I use these on nearly all my bases. I'm not a huge fan of dry brushing sand and paint or textured paint, it can work really well. Um, but when you are applying it at this sort of scale, in particular, um, it looks okay, but I don't think it looks very realistic. So you've got enough texture there already. The wash there gives you a little bit of depth, but also looks a little bit messy and basic as it is. You could just stick tufts or scattered grass on there now and it would be fine. But I like to kind of build up textures to make it look a little bit more realistic. And this is just a super, super easy way of doing it. So Vallejo pigments here, there's, there's loads of different companies that make pigments out of there. The color ranges themselves vary, but they're all pretty much the same and work the same way. Um, so this is light center. Um, and I'm literally going to get someone on a very old brush and brush it in to the mixture. And as you can imagine, this is why it's in in incredibly important that not only is the wash dry, but then also the, the texture um, paint as well. Otherwise you'll just make one big hot mess here. So, those powders are unsealed um, and I'm going to leave it that way. Um, one of the, the way I've applied them, the fingers won't be touching it too much. They're brushed quite deeply down into the grain and I've blown the excess off. Um, so it's not too much of an issue. If you, certain ways you use powders, you may want to seal them. It does change the look of them slightly, but it doesn't really matter the way I've used them on the base there. But what I think it provides is a more realistic, kind of very dry-ish earth surface. I will add a bit more back to that in a moment, but next up, some tufts um, and I've been using wall paint figures tufts for all of my epic battle stuff two mil um, you can also get two mil tufts from other places but these ones I like um, and again just uh, adding them to the base where you think looks right So I mentioned earlier a little bit about textures and I'm going to bring in some more here. So this is Vallejo Thick Mud, um, a European mud. Now the Thick Mud range is more of an effect, I believe, um, than a base texture, so to speak. Um, if you apply it thick enough, it will work as a base texture, I suppose, um, but it is a little bit more translucent. Um, now this is a kind of a wetter looking mud if you apply it really thick, but if you just apply it in little areas, Again, it can just give you a little bit more variation. So I'm gonna get, again, an old brush and grab little parts of this 
and just splodge it on in areas. Now, you, when I first put it on, it'll look really quite wet, obvious, because it's got a paint content to it, but in, in terms of the effect, it will dry out quite a lot when applied in small areas. So I've added the flag off camera, mainly because of the way I've got my camera set up at the moment, that it's a little bit tricky to uh, to bend round past it, but maybe I'll do a tutorial at some point about how I do flags. But uh, it's uh, I've, I've cut one of the flags out of the sheet that you get from the Warlord Games Major Box set. Um, I've just gone for the standard um, Army of, uh, of Northern Virginia, um, I believe, flag, or the standard um, Confederate battle flag, anyway, sorry. Um, it may not be the right one that would be on General Jackson's HQ, I'm not sure, but I don't have anything else suitable, and that was clearly not unsuitable, I'd say. Right, so now I'm going to show you how I finish it off, though. As you'll see, there's little bits of white showing, so it's a nice, fairly thick paper. I've glued it and folded it so it's not completely straight, so it looks like it's fluttering in the wind. Um, I just use contrast paints again, just to touch this up. So I've got contrast blood angels red for the red parts, um, some talisar blue for the blue parts, and then I use some black templar as well, just to add a little bit of shadowing and a little bit of maybe char or soot from from the from the gunfire and things around. So all I'm doing really is going in and playing with the edging. And the secondary part then is just to dull those down. And that's just very, very, very small amounts of the contrast black. Just reinforce the shadows that are already on the artwork. And again, just add a little bit of what looks like charring to the edges. Just use a slightly wet brush and just blend it in a little bit. I think it just does a nice effect. The flag's moving slightly. I, when I glue them, I don't glue them to the banner pole. I just glue the flag to itself tight enough that it holds on there. It's just so that if I do find a better option for a flag or want to remove it, I can do. And there we are, all finished. I've um, added a, a quick touch up of um, black paint just around the rim of the base, but other than that, I've not done anything else. Um, it's pretty much all dry now. Very much um, a, a nice tabletop level for this scale. Um, nothing's gonna win any awards. Um, and I haven't shown you every single stage of doing this process, but hopefully given you enough of an idea about my thought processes and my techniques in painting that should any of you who um, would like to sort of use the same methods would be able to do so. So hopefully it's useful. Um, I love doing them. They're very, very fun doing the command stands. Um, the, the units themselves are a little bit more hard work to get through with all, all the, the 100 um, small miniatures per five stand unit if you're going with that size um, but these command stands are really really nice and I'm a big fan of the uh, the Warlord sculpts um, they're very very good for this scale so thank you very much for watching if you uh, are interested in seeing more American Civil War content from me in this scale then please do check out the other videos on my channel there are a lot to do with this including painting things as well now I do cover other historical periods and game systems on the channel as well there are other painting guides and some bolt action stuff as well so check that out if you haven't seen it already thanks very much for watching please do like share and subscribe and all that jazz and I'll catch you soon